The next item on my shop improvement project list was replacing my drill press table. And I've had this current drill press table for about four years now, and it has some definite issues. First, because of the large swing on the adjustment handle on this particular drill press, I had to notch out the back corner of the tabletop, and the arm still contacts the tabletop pretty regularly, which is just annoying. And second, I'm not a huge fan of the design of this fence, and it seems to be in the way more often than it's actually useful. My biggest issue though has nothing really to do with the table itself, and that's the lack of dust collection here at the drill press. And I wanted to address all three of these things with the new drill press table I'm building, and I started by mocking up the design in SketchUp so that I could work out the sizing of everything. I actually based this design largely on Woodpecker's new drill press table, which features a small drawer underneath the table, which raises the tabletop enough to get it out of the way of the adjustment handle. Once I had the design worked out, I could get to building, starting by removing the old drill press table, which was attached through the cast iron table with a few screws. Next, I cut down the material I'd be using for the tabletop, which was a few pieces of half-inch Baltic birch plywood and a table saw. While I'm cutting, I should mention that I do have plans available for this drill press table with a full cut list, materials list, and detailed dimensions, and I'll link to the plans in the video description below in case you're interested. One thing I did really like about my old drill press table was this replaceable insert, which can easily be swapped out when it gets chewed up by repeated drilling. And when thinking about how I could replicate a similar design on my new table, it <laughs> dawned on me that I could just use a flush trim bit and route a pocket flush with this pocket in my new tabletop. And I recently got this white side combination flush trim bit from BitsBits, who is my new exclusive router bit supplier, and I'm super excited to be working with them. And BitsBits has given me a 15% off code in case you need some new router bits for your shop, and I'll link to the bits I'm using in this video and in my future videos in the video description below. Before routing, I went ahead and laid out the exact location of the insert on the new tabletop, which as you can see is also a good bit larger than my old drill press table. After laying out the location, I cleared out the bulk of the area with a Forstner bit at the drill press, and you can see why I'd like to have some kind of dust collection here at the drill press, because drilling larger holes like this just makes a huge mess. After drilling, I attached the new tabletop to the old tabletop using some double stick tape, and then I could get the pocket flushed up. I set my depth stop on my router to ensure the bearing would ride on the inside of the existing pocket, and then got to routing. And as you can see, this flush trim bit left me with a super clean surface finish, and after flush trimming, I swapped over to an astro-coated white side chamfer bit, also from Bits Bits, to break those sharp edges. Also, is there anything nicer than a freshly chamfered Baltic birch plywood edge? Just so satisfying to look at those layers. Looking good. Anyway, I got the new top removed from the old top, and now that the pocket was routed, I could glue on another layer of half-inch Baltic birch to beef up the thickness. And clamping this kind of glue up is always a little bit tricky, and while I certainly could have brad nailed the pieces together from below, I decided to try out a new tool, this vacuum bag, which I picked up from Rockler. And in case you're not familiar with vacuum bags, they allow you to apply even pressure across a large surface area and are particularly useful for veneering, which is something I really want to experiment more with in the future. This particular vacuum bag, which is made by Roar Rocket, is pretty unique as you can use it with a vacuum pump with this little Rockler adapter, or you can use a hand pump to remove the air for a much cheaper, lower tech option. And since the valve on the bag only allows air out, you don't have to maintain a constant vacuum pressure with the pump. After letting the tabletop sit in the vacuum bag for a few hours, I could pull it out and I was left with a perfectly glued up top. Next, I got the ends of the top cleaned up, but left the edges rough as I needed to cut a pair of dados into the top to house some T-Track. And speaking of which, I got two pieces of T-Track cut to size at the miter saw. To cut the dados, I figured I'd use a straight bit at the router table, but unfortunately realized the power feeder that I installed on this table wouldn't allow me to move the fence back far enough for this dado, and this is something I might need to address in the future. On to plan B, I set up a dado stack at the table saw and cut a pair of 3 quarter inch by 3 8 inch dados into the tabletop. And the blade height wasn't quite high enough on the first pass, so I raised it slightly and got the fit I was looking for with the T-Track just below the surface of the plywood. With the dados cut, I could then trim the edges of the tabletop to size, and I waited to do this until now in case I got any blowout from my dado stack. 
Now, had I left the corners of this table sharp, I would have been guaranteed to bang into them with my hip while moving around the shop, so I decided to round them off using this Rockler corner radius template, which has really been coming in handy lately. First, I traced the outline of the radius onto the corners of the tabletop and rough cut them with my jigsaw to remove the bulk of the material, and then I set up a flush trim bit on the router table to clean up the corners using a template. And these corner templates work so well, and I definitely recommend them if you use a lot of rounded corners in your work. Next, I got the tabletop sanded, cleaning up the edges and faces, and I also added a chamfer to the top and bottom edges to break those sharp edges. With the top cleaned up, I could install the Rockler T-Track, pre-drilling holes using a self-centering drill bit, and then screwing the T-Track in place. Next, I laid out locations for the leveling screws for the tabletop insert, which will allow me to account for the slight variations in the half-inch plywood I'll be using for the inserts themselves. And I drilled and countersunk the holes and then dialed in the screw heights based on the half-inch plywood inserts I had already cut for the old table. Cool. With that, the tabletop was pretty much done except for applying some finish, so I can move on to building the little cabinet and drawer which would live beneath the tabletop and space it off of the cast iron table. I made this cabinet and drawer out of some shop scraps, so it's a random assortment of pieces, but that's fine for shop projects. After cutting the pieces to size of the table saw and miter saw, I drilled some pocket holes for assembly, and this is also how I'll attach the cabinet to the underside of the tabletop. Assembling the cabinet was a lot more awkward than it needed to be because I decided to use two pieces of plywood for the bottom rather than just cutting into a larger piece of plywood, and this made aligning everything a little bit tricky. Also, this cabinet doesn't have a front or a top stretcher because it would have made the drawer kind of unusably small, so spacing the sides was also a little bit tricky. I eventually got it all screwed together, and next I could get the drawer assembled, first tacking it together using glue and brad nails, and then reinforcing the corners with a few screws. I also chamfered the edges of the drawer bottom, setting the chamfer deep enough so that it met the sides of the drawer, and this just helps to blend the bottom with the sides of the drawer, which just gives it a nicer look. Finally, I gave the drawer a good sanding, breaking any sharp edges. Next, I could get the drawer installed in the cabinet, and I first attached the drawer slides to the sides of the cabinet with a quarter inch spacer below the slides. Then I attached the drawer to the slides, leaving that same spacer below the slides in the drawer to provide clearance between the drawer and the bottom of the cabinet. With the drawer installed, I could get the false front added using a few shims below the drawer front to provide an even reveal, and I pre-drilled and countersunk holes from inside the drawer box, and then attached the drawer front with these one inch drawer front adjustment screws. Finally, I got the cabinet attached to the underside of the top, and I centered the cabinet, clamped it in place, and then attached it using inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. With that, the drill press table was pretty much done, so I could get it installed on the drill press. This was super simple as I sized the cabinet and tabletop to fit this Nova drill press, and I just clamped the cabinet in place and attached it using screws and some <laughs> giant washers from below. For the fence on this drill press table, I considered a lot of options, from making my own out of wood to using aluminum extrusion, but in the end, I landed on this Rockler drill press fence for one main reason, that's because it has a dust port built in. The fence also has a T-track slot on the top edge so that I can use a stop block, and I'm also going to make some taller faces for the fence, which I can attach to the fence with a T-slot groove for when I need to drill taller items. To get a vacuum hose to the fence, I decided to use this super cool wall-mounted 4-inch to 2.5-inch adapter from Rockler's Dustrite line of dust collection accessories, and this allows me to easily pull one of the dust hoses off of my bandsaw, which is right next to the drill press, and then using a Dustrite handle, attach the hose to this adapter. I attached the other end of the adapter to the fence using some 2.5-inch flex hose, which I cut as short as I could to reduce the drag from the flex hose, and the dust collection was good to go. So in my excitement to get this table put together, I had neglected to apply finish, so next I stripped off the fence and T-Track so that I could roll on a few coats of Total Boat Halcyon Clear, which has become my go-to shop finish as it dries super quick, rolls on nicely, and is extremely durable. And I'll link to it in the video description below in case you're interested. After the finish dried, I got the T-Track and fence added back, and I also installed this little Wixy laser crosshair so I can more easily see exactly where I'm drilling and I'm pretty impressed by the accuracy after adjusting it to my drill press. With that, I'm calling the drill press table finished, and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. 
The dust collection works well, and even if it doesn't get everything while I'm actually drilling, being able to just brush the chips into the dust port to clean things up is so much better. So again, I do have plans available for this project in case you're interested, and I'll link to those below. If it's your first time here, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Also want to say a huge shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons. I've actually switched my fan funding back over to Patreon, and I'll have a link to that in case you want to check that out. And last, while you're here, why not check out another video of mine that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. All right, thanks for watching everybody, and until next time, happy building.